Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more Daybear 1998. When we last left off, we had solved a puzzle. Now, well, that was a bang. Let's uh, switch up to something with a little bit more, a little bit more balls. All right, let's go get our sample. Evening. Oh, you're an ugly motherfucker, aren't you? Well, no matter. Not quite the threat we had originally thought. Now, this gun is actually really cool. Uh, it's a shame you don't really get to use it that much. All right, now we have our... Re-up to mission control. PLX 731 sample secured. En route to second helipad for extraction. Do you copy? Good job, agent. But I'm afraid I have some bad news. The objective of this operation has been updated. Agent Krychek and Wes have disappeared. And until they've been found, we can't allow you to leave the building. Your new objective is to complete the mission of the Epsilon team and download all the research data on your DID. Glaze confirmed status update. Over. New objective confirmed. On my way. Over. Sure. I'm just a war dog after all. Right, well, missions changed. They always do. Let's go. So now we have to sort something else out. But we get a nice little shower before we start heading further into the facility, which is always nice. Uh, mm, uh, mm, ooh, debate of the century. Well, this is the only one we can go down. Evening. You right there, fella? Yeah, actually some cool blood splatters on the windows and ceilings and walls and things like that. Hey, it's our red friend. Excellent. So, yeah, the blood splatter effects and things are actually fairly decent. Alright, let's load that up. Load you up. And I guess we're actually kind of running out of um, inventory. <laughs> In fact, we are out of inventory space. Um, right, we'll take the handgun out. Uh, what's our health like? 100%. Yeah, we're fine. Excuse me. Thank you. Can anyone hear me? This is Agent Crane. An unidentified subject. Hostile. Protective hazmat clothing. He just shot at me. I think I heard him. Proceed with extreme caution. He is armed and dangerous. Crane, can you hear me? Crane. Well, that doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good at all. See if we can't find our friend Crane. I say friend. I don't think these guys really like them <laughs> like each other that much, but whatever. With the exception of two, but we'll go into that a little bit later on. Anyway, let's go see what's up in the higher floors. Now, apparently, uh, most of the people that actually work in this facility are very unaware of what actually happens in this place. So, yeah, bear that in mind. Evening. I mean, it seems to be fed. Oh, hey, look, our red friends followed us again. I don't really know, like, what is, like, is this guy supposed to have been burnt? Is he, did he explode? Like, what happened to this guy? Has he been completely, like, eaten? Anyway, who knows? Oh, no. So unfortunately, we need to leave the sample behind. Shit. I absolutely have to recover those samples somehow. Don't worry, we will. Remains of Agent West. Looks like some asshole gunned him down. Sandman, do you copy? I found West's body. Looks like he was shot to death. No sign of Crycheck yet. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? God damn this cocksucking storm! 
Yeah, somebody's not very happy. All right, anyway, let's go have a little listen to this log that we found. Uh, now, interestingly, we've got... We've got some logs here that I don't think we've read. So that is us, codename Lev. Special agent, we're Hades unit. Yep, okay. What else have we got here? As a result of the long-standing collaboration between Hexcore Biogenetics Tech Division and uh, Vortex, a leading manufacturer of electronics equipment, the DID is the first major step in a new technological frontier for the company's private mi uh, militia, or milita, I should say. Uh, while we're still in the trial phase, the DID, Data Interchange Device, is a device with many potential applications initially conceived as a trans a uh, transistor radio for operatives to communicate with HQ. It has undergone a number of changes that have greatly increased its capabilities. Fastened to the right forearm of the subject, the DID serves to monitor your health status and, if necessary, take action to improve it. Thanks to a revolutionary system that allows you to intravenously integrate resources gathered in the field. At the same time, the device allows you to manage those resources, whether it be weapons, ammunition, or consumables, as well as access to things like maps, files, audio logs, or ID tags. Through the use of special connecting cables, it can be linked to almost any communication device for uploading, downloading, life-saving data, or to hack into security devices to unlock new rooms. The DID is the accumulation of a lengthy and costly stage of planning and development. We urge that extra care be taken whilst out in the field to ensure its effectiveness and operability. It also has like amazing battery life. H additive. An experimental uh, immunostimulant produced by Hexcore Biogenetics and given to the Special Forces Hades Hexcore Advanced Division for Extraction Research. For field testing, the substance is injected automatically via the DID device that company forces have received. The, mo the molecules act as helpers to resolve the state of confusion in subjects as many uh, restorative drugs with wildly accelerated regenerative abilities often cause temporary physical and or mental suffering. It also serves as a painkiller, pain relief and antibiotic medication. Ah, okay, so we didn't actually read those. Interesting. he's dead now anyway let's get to hacking this door hopefully we can find some nice goodies behind so Q and F Q F hacking successful so what's behind this door eh? anything good uh, got some mental drops which are pretty useless got some hollow points which are quite nice and um, we got some MG. You know what? Also, this character is the only character, that, as far as I know, that gets the MG, which is curious. And uh, we've got some stamina fluid as well. That gives you uh, unlimited stamina for a short amount of time. I don't really know any situation where that's useful. Kind of like the mental drops. Uh, odd decisions, really, but, you know, I guess items are items you know extra items are fun anyway let's keep exploring ah the security system is still operational well let's go see if we can do something about that shall we come on sir let's cure your attitude problem that second shot definitely should have done something I don't know what it should have done but something It's like all quiet on the old western front down here. Now, she gets up, I'm pretty sure. Hello. Evening. Come to daddy. That's alright, I'll wait. I might as well load up on bullets whilst we wait, I suppose. 
Are you coming? In your own time, sir. Seriously. You know, some of us have got things to do. Deactivating security systems and whatnot. Here he comes. Yeah, I love how derpy the zombies are. Oh, his hat came off. Oh, he's done. See you later, friend. Come on. Yeah, she's done. I kind of like the way the zombies react. It's the uh, other enemies that don't really react to any kind of fire, which is questionable. But, you know, like I said, you know, 10 people made this. When I say 10 people, they all weren't programming. So, significantly less than that, really. Evening. Come on, sir. Oop. Never shoot at them when they get up. Now, you don't have to go for headshots on these guys. Uh, but I think headshots do more damage. Maybe. Not really sure, to be honest with you. Yeah, the friend. You're having a bit of a bad day. Having a bit of a rest. Don't blame you. Oh, we've got another super secret. So... This one is HB747. HB747. There we go. Investigation and rec reclamation report classified from Dr. Ware to Lieutenant uh, Brubaker. Aegis Test Facility Inspection, North 1. In accordance with Central Command's orders, a new inspection of the uh, cemetery was carried out today. As per procedure, we conducted an environmental analysis every two months in order to evaluate the state of the structure for the purpose of future reclamation. Despite the fact that 13 years have passed since the accident, I strongly advise against any attempts to reclaim the centre. Today we lost two more highly trained operatives who were yanked through the foundation kicking and screaming by something that has yet to be identified. It's fairly obvious that as a result of the accident of 1985, the test subjects have undergone some kind of mutation that has increased their lifespan strength compared to the usual guinea pigs subjected to CSR03. As the site served to field test the BC weapons development by Aegis Laboratories in the North Blue 2, it's impossible to determine just how many guinea pigs sandwiched into that place were exposed to which agents during the accident, but it's clear that whatever factors are at play has created something weird and extremely dangerous. This is their home now, and the bastards won't let themselves be taken so easily. My opinion remains the same. Incinerate the cemetery with napalm and build a new one from its ashes. Although I suspect that Central Command will once again discard my advice in the hopes that the test subjects will be retrieved uh, for further experiments. I sincerely hope that you'll listen to me sooner uh, I guess it's supposed to say sooner rather than later instead of it just says sooner than later because it's starting to feel like I'm offering up my men as lunch for these monsters bi-monthly waiting for them to tame I really hope it's not like that uh, attached is a document we recovered from the ruins only parts of it are legible but I'm sure that what little information it does contain is well worth the lives of those two more good men document as follows. I voiced my concern about carrying out such sensitive tests during the typhoon season. Most of the facility's power is delegated to the maintenance of guinea pigs and for the use of emergency systems. In the unlikely event that a blackout should occur due to harsh weather conditions, one of the two could possibly lose power midway through an experiment with disastrous results. It seems, however, that the upper levels are in a panic to conduct their precious long-term study of CSR03 and they just can't wait till the end of the typhoon season um, before interrupting the experiments for some weeks. This is not very well written. Shocking, right? Anyway, I can't just blame them for not listening at all. We're making great progress here and I'm looking forward to presenting the results to the government commission. This record is absolute paramount as is my entire career on the line. What? This record is absolutely paramount as my 
as is my entire career on the line. Jesus. The rest of the document is legible. Oh man, these 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 are big logs. This part of the document is illegible. As planned, field use of CSR03 shall be carried out in two distinguishable stages called destroy and clean. The details are as follows. Stage 1, 0 to 24 hours, destroy. Within 24 hours, the infected undergo somewhat predictable mutations which strengthen their bodies and turn them into dangerous genetic abominations beyond our control. Stage 2, 24 to 48 hours, clean. The second stage, defined as recessive, afflicts the same subjects and causes their bodies to implode, collapsing on the genetic level and disintegrating within the final 24 hours, leaving no residual trace behind. The most remarkable thing here is that during stage 1, CSR03 latches onto the host's body, twisting it into wild varieties to form, uh, of form that can more or less be predicted based on certain physical attributes. With this in mind, we were able to differentiate differentiate between variations of type 7 between variants of type 7 this it, none of this means <laughs> it's just words the code name for subjects infected with caster have undergone further mutations but what is even more perplexing is the disturbing oddity that has arisen from studies of this type even now we're unsure exactly which factors cause this anomaly this twisting amalgamation. The rest is illegible. Yeah, these, oh man, these logs, they're just words. It's word soup. Anyway, uh, okay. Let's get out of here. If you're gonna write massive information dumps like this, they need to be good. They need to be really good. They need to be interesting and worth reading. But they just, unfortunately, they didn't get it right. Now, I'm assuming that a lot of that is down to the trans uh, translation uh, problems. Eh, uh, we'll probably find some more bullets. So this is a very Resident Evil puzzle. A portrait depicting the Greek god Ares. It is said that it, his beauty is equal only to his lust for violence. Yeah, so we got some blurb flavor text here. Now, not super important stuff out here anyway. Although this is important. Whoever worked here was called A Wong. Ada found what she does during the day. Oh, of course. Of course we have another another log. And that is 817. Where's 817? 817. 821. Ah, 817. Oh, these aren't even in order. That's good. That's that's nice. Right, subject. Direct supervision required. Dear Dr. Wire. Uh, given your less than stellar actions and atrocious delays in providing my men with the Department of Defense. Uh, that, ah, this writing, guys. Given your less than stellar actions and atrocious delays in providing my men with the Department of Defense with an on site access to the latest data and samples at the North. Uh, Bluetooth facility. I will personally be visiting on 19th of August to assess the state of your work and report it to my superiors who are paying you extremely well and funding one of the most costly research programs of the past two decades. We are grateful for the work that you have done on Caster. You have exceeded our expectations with the prototype and we could not value you more. For this reason alone we have overlooked a, a preposterous amount of deadline extent and colourful miscommunications in the past. Now, however, the time has come to obtain results. Upon my arrival, you must ensure that all test data related to Pollux is made available for study and evaluation by my team, which will include testing of the latest viral cultures on organic vessels. Naturally, any further delays would seriously jeopardise your career. Therefore, upon my arrival, I trust that I will will find everything satisfactory with the aforementioned plan and you will do everything not to disappoint my trust in order 
to provide these United States with a definitive soldier that is the accumulation of half a century's research. No reply is necessary. I look forward to meeting you uh, our next meeting. General Francis Hummel, Special Projects Division 4, United States Army. <sighs> okay. So, uh, a portrait depicting the Greek god Pollux, one half of the Dioscuri with his twin brother Castor, a skilled boxer. He is said to be a mortal. Aye. The private office of the founder. From here I should be able to restore system passwords. Well, that we shall do. Jesus Christ, Dr. Ware's Diary 1. Part 1. Castor and Pollux. Of the possible names, what could possibly be more appropriate than these? Indeed, the revolutionary breakthrough that is Pollux could never have existed without its brethren Castor. Perhaps the most male ma uh, malevolent chemical weapon ever conceived. As a matter of fact, we knew practically nothing of it before the salvage of that Japanese submarine um, was completed in the 70s, except that it brought about irreversible damage to organisms that would shame even Saren. That being said, this whole program, one that will inevitably rewrite the history of BC weapons and elevate the United States even higher on its supreme global pedestal, didn't arrive merely by chance. No. Not by mere chance, rather divine intervention that the vessel delivering its toxic payload to our predecessors never reached its destination. Instead, becoming haplessly entangled off the coast of the Norfolk Islands in Washington State, where it remained unseen and forgotten for years. It may well be fluke, however, that particular type of jellyfish native to the island came in contact with its itsy bitsy doses that gradually escaped the rotten hull, instantly transforming perhaps evolving and infecting some of the island's villagers. But it wasn't until the obscure crisis claimed its first human victim that our government decided to step in and take action, stumbling upon the terrible truth that is, in fact, the only reason we're here today is due to pure and simple incompetence of its crew. The funny thing about this narrow escape is that, pot is that a potentially disastrous yet poorly executed revenge plot by some defeated nation overseas has once again turned out to be quite the luck for us. Part 2 1973 was the year that the Aegis Laboratories were built on the island designated North Blue 2. In order to safely extract and repurpose the liquid gas we discovered in that Japanese submarine, I still remember the salvage operation and construction works as the company gave me free reign when it came to the most uh, of the architectural and design choices. We were able to free part of the hole from its seabed tomb, later built the concrete bunker that it currently houses it. It was one heck of an engineering job, but the facilities we use today are more than worth the immense effort. The lower levels of the North Blue 2 facility the most top secret ones contain the submarine. Our most vital experiment rooms, whilst other levels, contain the observation deck, loading area for shipping of sensitive materials, additional labs and storage area. On the other hand, the top levels accessible by ordinary staffers, including office space, a conference room and modern server room and uh, Uh, necessary amenities most of the people who work there have no idea what lies beneath and are ignorant to the fact that they're parading around a monument where history is being rewritten every single day come to think of it i doubt anyone truly knows what's going on down there part three caster could possibly be the ultimate weapon for large-scale chemical attacks yet the dispersal method is surprisingly simple the CSR3 gas is compressed at a very high temperature in special reinforced tanks that are loaded onto an aircraft. When the aircraft reaches its target, a single or multiple caster cylinders are jettisoned. Once they strike the surface, the release mechanism is triggered. Uh, thanks for the interruption. Uh, the pressurized gas uh, is released at a high pressure which converts the pressurized liquid gas 
oh, liquid to gas, making it extremely volatile. This is where Castor shows its unique colors. The gas then expands rapidly like a mighty flame and feeds on the oxygen in the surrounding area, creating a sort of closed off environment that makes it nearly impossible for any breathing organisms to survive gradually. It will lose all effectiveness and dematerialize, leaving no trace behind. If a large enough quantity were to be spread to a highly populated location, it could affect thousands upon thousands of victims within seconds, instantly consuming a population, foreign military, or a group of unpleasant and expendable mercenaries sent out to the scene of a confrontation. Yeah, man, they like their words. So these around here are kind of important. Again, it's just words, lots and lots of words. This game likes words. Look, there's more words here. Uh, so this is Dr. Weir's Diary 2. Well, that's also lots of words. So, July 23, 1998. I should have known that these people will never do anything without reason. Managing a state-of-the-art laboratory like this was something I only dreamed of in the university. Once in a lifetime opportunity, and that's why I willingly accepted this post without thinking too deeply. I was born gifted with unique abilities that I nourished over time. Even when my body started feeling the strangest sensations, strangest of sensations and started to abandon me. I became enslaved in service of, to fear. Fear that I'd be shut in some school laboratory forever. Fear that I'd never have the chance to birth something in total independence, something that rightfully belonged to me. Looking back, it's clear that I was really misguided because our government doesn't believe in independence or autonomy, only uh, representation or repression. This edifice was built for a very special purpose, and although I was given the freedom to scale and chisel away at the Olympus of research being conducted here, that never meant it was my mountain to reign over. Despite the truly incredible results I have achieved since Northwood was colonized, my best still isn't good enough for them. Despite the department uh, the Defense Department spends millions of dollars every day to achieve new goals, and I am solely responsible for better or worse. This place is their goose with an endless supply of golden eggs, and those eggs surely can sustain America's global leadership at the forefront of chemical warfare. And to think this all came by by chance. None of it ever would have happened without investigation into a mysterious illness that plagued the local townsfolk and led to a discovery of an old Japanese vessel stranded off the coast. According to the diary that belonged to the captain, his vessel was carrying a deadly cargo of death itself, deep beneath a deep breath of hell. But something went wrong, and their misfortune turned into a new beginning for me, for us, for the nation, a completely new line of research. But now I'm starting to wonder if all this was planned by that guy in his chair with his head buried in works of chemistry and Greek mythology. I won't allow a single breath of this beautifully ma <laughs> malevolent air to escape, nor will I exert less effort to reach the goal of our glorious nation. No general or government agency can claim otherwise, but inside me right now is the fear giving away to more doubts than certainties. I can't help but wonder if the legendary Homer ever once faltered in the wake of his timeless masterworks. Ah, Jesus. Shakespeare it is not. So yeah, I'm guessing that is the guy. And he was obviously crippled to some degree. Now, this is one of the worst puzzles in the game. Because you need to... I mean, these kind of give... Uh, let me just show you. So we have a keyboard here with the Greek alphabet and some, you know, English. And we have a typewriter here that we can use to reference what key is what. Now, to do this, we'll get asked questions. Cast a light into darkness and there shall be no storm from which he cannot save you. So, if I go to my notes here. I actually was stuck on this for quite a long time. Until 
I actually realized um, what was going on. Once you realize this trick, it's actually quite easy. The only trouble is you need to read everything. You need to know a little bit of Greek mythology, which those posters do kind of help you with. You need to understand which Greek symbols line up to, you know, what on the keyboard. And yeah, it, it's kind of a kind of a mess to say the least. Um, so anyway, cast a light into the darkness and there shall be no storm for which he cannot save you. The answer for that is caster. And that is, I believe, X, A, zoom in on my notes here, uh, X, A, I think this is correct, T, O, Right, there we go, that's the first. No matter the injury, it will never end his journey. And that's Pollux. So that is, um, I believe, that one, yes, because that's P. And then we want O, uh, L, which is that it should be on the keyboard two of those it should be u next which i believe is that one and then x which i believe is actually no it's not actually x i don't think Yeah, because that there technically should be X. But I have a feeling that might be wrong. Nope, that's right, actually. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, luckily I'm playing this on PC, so I can just look at my keyboard. Um, long and perilous was the journey of the Argonauts to enter into its possession. And what were the Argonauts after? They were after the Golden Fleece. So... We want the golden uh, fleece, golden, and then we want E, hang on a minute, do we need D first, don't we, which is that one, and E, uh, N, I believe, where are you? You want the weird, that I think. A, E, X, E. There we go. Liev to mission control. If you can hear me, I've just restored the facility passcodes from the matrix. I'm in the process of gathering the 731 samples and data off the server. Over. Yeah, so that's... It's kind of an interesting puzzle, to be honest with you guys. But it... Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one as well. Um, I'm actually going to leave this episode here, because we're on half an hour. Uh, when we come back, we're going to continue to go back down and get our sample. But yeah, it's a bit of an odd one, to be honest. It's... <sighs> I don't know, man. It it seems way more cryptic than uh, it actually is. But from doing my research and looking up stuff about this game, it looks like an awful lot of people got stuck on that. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure when we played the demo ages and ages ago, I had to look it up as well. Is that when I streamed it? I can't remember. Yeah, very cryptic puzzle. Probably the most cryptic puzzle in the game. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. As always, till next time. Thank you.